All right, YouTube. Well, went on my first test drive with the brakes, and look at that there. And what's sad about it is I never heard it when I left the house. I was listening for noises, I was listening for anything when I was turning. Never heard anything. I started didn't start to hear it till I came back. So yeah, the rotor was coming in contact with that with that uh, control arm right there. So now yeah, I got into my rotor pretty good. So now I guess what I got to do is do a little surgery. Do a little amputation right there on that corner. All right. All right. Surgery complete. Still got to clean it up, obviously, but that will no longer be in the way. That's pretty much what I did right there. Went in and cut the, that corner off and then kind of rounded the edges, cleaned it up. As far as structural integrity, I don't know if that's gonna affect anything. I mean, still I got all the meat right here on the side on both ends, so um, to me, I guess it should still be okay, but I'm not a suspension engineer, so I don't know if, it's, if I completely ruined this control arm or not, but I couldn't have it rubbing the rotor like that anymore. I got them on blocks right now so I'm simulating it being on the ground and I've achieved more than enough same thing on the other side the driver side this is the passenger side which was worse than the driver but the driver was rubbing so we got that taken care of and I'm gonna go test drive it again and see how it does all right YouTube so everything's done. The disc brake conversion is finally complete. Um, as you can tell at the very beginning of this video, I had to trim the control arm because it was rubbing the disc brake rotor. I did a quick Google search and checked some of the truck forms, mainly the 67 through 72 form. And there was a few people that had the same issue. And there was, a, there was some people that said they had no issue. So I really can't explain why I had that. I checked everything, stared at, you know, everything that I did installed, and I just couldn't figure it out. The only thing I noticed, the only thing I noticed is that there was, a, it seems like there's a lot of positive camber on the wheel, so they kind of do like this now when it's aired up, and that would force the control arm, the lower one, to touch the rotor, but even with that, you shouldn't have any clearance issues in that area at all no matter how much positive or negative you have so that may be a flaw in cpp's design i was thinking about is there any variation differences between the 63 through 66 lower control arms versus the 67 through 72 because these control arms came off that white 70 that i used to have uh, when I had them cupped and rebuilt and all that stuff, these are the ones I used on the truck because I figured they were all the same. They definitely look the same. I don't think there would be any variations in it, but I'm, there might be. I'm not sure. So if you do this conversion on a truck just like mine, you may run into the same issue. You may not. You know, I don't know if there would be any difference between a static drop versus bagged. I don't see why there why that matters but um i don't know outside of that we trimmed it clearanced it made sure everything looked good i went on a test drive yesterday no more rubbing no more grinding no issues there Stru truck stops great um the pedal feel is really almost the same slightly stiffer but Nothing I have to, okay, now I need to relearn the brake kind of feel. No, I mean, it, it, it feels the same. So if you want to stick with manual brakes, make sure you get a one inch bore master cylinder. Um, we're going to do a little test drive here in a minute. I'll, I'll do some uh, hard braking. I've been messing with the uh, proportioning valve. 
I've turned it up twice already and I've done half turns increasing the pressure going to the um, to the rear brakes because in CPP's uh, website their instructions say that if your brakes in the rear lock up before the front you need to decrease the pressure so I've been increasing the pressure half a turn until um, until I get to that point so far I haven't but I've only turned it up I guess now one complete full turn so I haven't had any leaks I had a few minor leaks after the first test drive and you know of course discovering that my rotor is rubbing the control arm I noticed there was a couple of minor leaks you know just retighten the fitting and it went away so overall I'm very pleased outside of the control arm issue and even that I'm not really bothered by that you know just sometimes when you deviate from stock and you you do this kind of stuff and you start modifying your suspension and, and, and things of that nature no matter what vehicle it is sometimes you have to modify you sometimes you just have to modify things you have to you know you may have to bend things cut whatever you got to do it, it, and it is what it is it's just a part of the process and uh you know if that stuff bothers you then just stick with stock suspension i guess but i don't think i ruined the structural integrity of the control arm only time will tell so right now i'm gonna ride it and not worry about it um so yeah let's go on a little test drive i'll do a few couple of hard stops from like 50 miles an hour to zero um and we'll just go from there. One thing nice I will say about the uh, drop spindles is now to achieve the same ride height I had before, I have to put more air in the bag. So it was around 60 PSI at, at each front bag, and now it's about 75, and it rides a lot better, so a lot firmer of a ride. There she is. That's in the aired out position with the new drop spindles and the disc brake conversion. Looks really good. There's y'all's first glimpse of the wheels. I love how the wheels look. I like how they tie in with the white stripe and the white paint on the cab, at least what's left of it. So 
Yeah, when I do that C notch in the back, it'll take away that rake. Personally, me, I don't write, really like a whole lot of rake, especially on long beds. Short beds don't bother me as much. But for some reason, long beds, I either like them to set level or very, very, very subtle rake. Now, obviously, I won't drive in this position, but the cost member is very, very close to the ground. It's almost, I would say, less than two inches away from it. Yeah, I think she turned out amazing. Looks good. I like the stance. I like the wheels. I like it. Obviously, I wouldn't drive it in this position. But there it is. Not much clearance. So. All right, guys. I'm going to pretty much call it on this one. Disc brake conversion's finally done. Really having no issues with the brakes. No leaks. Stopping great. So. I hope you all enjoyed the process. I hope you all enjoyed the videos. Like, subscribe, share if you want to. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can always leave one. I try to answer the questions best I can. But like I say, guys, until then, thanks for watching.